Let's build the ALU for RISC-V 32i CPU. As it turns out, this is one of the not so complicated modules to build. The uh, R instruction format, uh, there are two fields. Uh, one field is called Funct3. You can see over here, it's three bits. Uh, and that really defines sort of the main ALU operation to be performed. And it's these last three bits here in uh, the selector, which we're going to define here in a minute. And this final bit is on the field called Funct7, and it's bit six. Uh, and this, these two pieces of information combined together compose a unique identifier for which uh, operation that the ALU is going to perform. So armed with that information, let's build the ALU. Let's start with inputs and outputs. So the ALU is, uh, you know, defined by two pieces of data that we want to perform some kind of operation on. They are 32 bits because we're building a i32 CPU eventually. We're going to define this first data value, and we're going to go ahead and call it uh, data A because the source of the data can be coming from the registers, but can also be coming from immediate values. So we're not going to presuppose where it's coming from. And there's going to be a second um, value or operand. We'll call this data B. And then as mentioned, there's going to be a selector, which is going to select the operation to be performed. So we'll just call this cell, and then cell is going to be four bits in width. So we will define that here. And I'll leave that as binary because I usually want to see the selector as binary. And then there's going to be an output, obviously. One output, uh, we'll stick it, we'll stick it down here somewhere. And again, the output's going to be 32 bits. Again, we will uh, look at that in hex, and we'll define, or we'll give this a name, data D, how about destination? Okay, and as usual, I put tunnels on all these. Okay, let's define the add operation. So add operation needs to take an adder, And so we're going to simply add together data A. And data B. And oops, I did not define the bit width of the adder. And then we're going to get a result, but we're going to need to pipe that result somewhere. So I'm going to go ahead and just um, put the result into a, an, into a named tunnel. Let's just call it um, add out. And it'll go somewhere in a minute. We need to do the same thing for the next instruction. So let's go ahead and find our subtractor. Just like that. So the next one is uh, shift logical, shift left logical. And I don't know about you, but <laughs> shift logical left makes more sense, which is the way I always think about it. But um, that's not the way they abbreviated these these uh, mnemonics. So you can see shift 
right logical versus shift right arithmetic, shift left logical. That's they put the uh, direction as the second character, and I don't know. I, I have I have trouble remembering those mnemonics, but uh, anyway, that's the way they are. So, you know, if you want to read assembly quickly, you need to really know what what the mnemonics stand for, which is why I wrote them out here because that's the way I always try to remember it. Is what is you know what do these acronyms actually stand for? Okay, so we need a shift left. So here's a shifter. Uh, so I'm going to do data A because data A is the value that we're trying to shift. And again, it's 32 bits. And again, we're, we are, this is a shift logical left. So that's what the default is for the shifter. Now the second the the second uh, parameter is how far we're going to shift. Now these are thirty two bit values, so this defines how many bits we want to shift. That's going to be a five bit value, as opposed to what we have here, which is a thirty two bit value. If I just go ahead and connect data B, you'll see what happens here. I will get a uh, incompatible width and that's right because again it only takes five bits to compose a number from 0 to 31 so what I'll do here instead is I will break down data B with a splitter we could just do a fan out of one and then and the top four, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 will be 0. And then from 5 on, we'll just count them as none. Okay, there might be an easier way to do that, but this, this is going to work fine. So on the input, we need data B. And on the output, This is going to be five bits wide. And we'll call this, uh, how about data B uh, lower five T. Now, this value can drive the number of bits to be shifted left. Shift left logical out. And there we go. So now the next instruction, uh, set less than. So uh, basically this means that this value is going to be set to 1 if A is less than B. So we need a comparator to do that. And we need... Our two inputs. And then on the less than, this will be uh, a logical one if A is less than B, which is exactly what we want. Now, the only problem is that's going to be one bit wide, but we want 32 bits. Let's put a bit extender here where um, the bit within is going to be one bit and the bit without is going to be 32 and we want the extension type to just be uh, all zeros because we uh, this is not signed or anything we just basically want uh, a, a one or a zero in the zeroth bit place with everything else zero filled
it's important to note that I didn't cover this, but this um, set less than is for uh, signed numbers, which by default, uh, this comparator is already set to two's complement. So that will deal with signed, uh, signed comparisons. So the next instruction is set less than unsigned. So we can just duplicate this and simply change the numeric type to unsigned. So that'll do an unsigned comparison. And we just need to call this one unsigned. The next one is the exclusive OR. So let's grab an exclusive OR gate. Mm, I usually make these narrow. And uh, again, So grab our inputs, and then of course this is not the right size, so the number of data bits needs to be 32. And we'll label the output. So the next instruction, um, shift right logical. So we need another shifter. Really, I think we can simply copy this. Try to keep this in line here. So we're going to shift logical right. Shift right logical. So this should be SRL. And again, we already have our lower five wired up here from this splitter. And so the next one is shift right arithmetic, which again takes care of sign extension for us by simply setting shift arithmetic right. And notice it puts the little puts a little space here that I guess that's telling you that's just the arithmetic shift as opposed to the logical shift. And then now we're just going to do a plain or. So I guess I'll grab an or gate here. Remember my bit settings finally. And then finally, an AND gate. So I think that defines all the operations. Now, the only thing that we need to do is we have all these outputs and they have to be routed to our data value here. And so that can be done uh, with a multiplexer or rather a demultiplexer, I think. No, sorry, multiplexer. I always get those confused. We have multiple we have multiple inputs going in and only one input going out, so that's multiplex. So we have um, four select bits, right? So here's our selector up here. So we have four select bits, and we have 32 
data bits. Let's do our output first because that's easy. That's our that's this tunnel value here. And let me zoom in a little bit, I think. So add out is zero. And I'm going to make these small so I can make them fit. In fact, I'm just going to copy these to make it easy. And we need to go up to, um, I think sub out is the maximum. Yeah, exactly. So we need to go up to what is that? That's eight. So that's zero and this is eight, right? Okay. And then, so these need to be in the, basically this, uh, this order with the exception of subtraction. But, uh, so, um, add is selector zero, which, which we have, uh, SLL, needs to be number one. And then finally, the one that we're missing is SRA. And um, SRA is defined as, let's see, this is eight uh, and four is 12. So this should be 13. And 13 is uh, here. So this should be SRA. So there should be 10 of these. Let me count them up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yep, there's 10 of them. Okay, and then finally, uh, we need to wire up the selector. All right, I think that is the extent of the ALU. Let's uh, let's test it. Let's do an adder, right? So if I poke, I'm going to zoom in a little bit as well. That's better. Let's poke one there. And two there, one plus two should be three. And over here we have three because the selector is all zeros and all zeros is the add. Let's, uh, let's actually flip this around. So two minus one, if we do a subtraction, which should be this bit, should be one, and it is. So, so far so good. Uh, so let's um, bit shift two, the number two, by one. And when we do that, that's the equivalent of multiplying by two. So we should get, f I should expect to see four over here if we shift uh, logical left. And shift logical left would be this selector. And indeed, we get a four over here. Um, okay, so set less than. So if A is less than B, we should get a one over here. In this case, it is not. So let me go ahead and set it. I've, I've set the selector to that instruction. Set less than. And indeed, we have a zero here. Now, if I flip this around, well, actually, it's equal. So I still expect this to be zero, and it is. So let me flip this around to make it less than. Now A is less than B, zero is less than two, and so I have a one over here in data D. 
So that seems to be working. Uh, I will come back to the unsigned value here in a second. Uh, let's XOR this. So um, it might be easier to, to do these uh, logicals with these defined as binary. So an exclusive or, if we, let me set this. So this, this is now the exclusive or selector turned on. And everything is zero, so I expect zeros. And then of course, if I have that one as one, then I should see a one over here. And if this is a one, I should see a one over here. Actually, let's flip this one to binary as well, we can make it easier. Right, and so if I turn this one to one, this should become zero, and it does. Okay, so exclusive or seems to be working. And you know, if we we do this across all the bits, you know, you should see this bit over here, and, and we do. Uh, so the shift right logical, I've got that selector in place. And um, we're going to shift right one bit. And I've got my data value to shift right here. So I expect to see uh, on the output over here, I expect to see the, the one move over one and then be filled with a zero because we're doing a logical shift. Um, and so what I noticed, I got an E here. And I got red. Um, oh, I see. I got red lines here. And the reason is because I didn't <laughs> didn't name these properly. So I've got basically it's showing red because there's conflicting outputs. So both of these, both of these are driving the same output. And so that's why Logisim is complaining. Okay. So yes, so now I see this bit got shifted over correctly, which is good. Uh, so let's let's go ahead and test the arithmetic shift right. So that should look like uh, this with this selector. And so because it's arithmetic, it should sh it should sign extend, basically it should take whatever uh, the sign is here. And when it shifts over, it should shift that value, which in this case, it, there's a one here. So uh, the one got shifted while leaving a one in this place over here, which is correct. Okay, so now let's do a logical or which should look like this for the selector. And, you know, in this case, I have a one down here in this bit and a one up here in this bit. And so both of those should be ones. And that's, that is correct. So finally, let's do the logical and, which should look like this. And in this case, both of these are just ones in their respective places, which should yield zero. So if I, do that, then we should see a one over here. Really, that is the extent of the ALU for a RISC-V 32i CPU.